Before I talk about VDJ recombination, what cell in your body recognizes something foreign? If you said lymphocytes, then you are correct. Examples are B cells and T cells. All lymphocytes are self-tolerant, meaning they don't attack self and immunocompetent. They recognize antigens, which is any molecule that can be recognized by the immune self, so this can be self and non-self. Lymphocytes utilize antibodies and are composed of the constant and variable region. The constant region keeps the antibody attached to the cell, while the variable region allows the cell to bind to antigens. The constant region is the same, while the variable region differs. We'll get back to that on a later note, but both regions are composed of the heavy and light chain. There are billions of different antibodies, but only 21,000 genes. So how can the body respond to all of these different antigens with a limited number of genes? VDJ recombination. You can think of VDJ recombination as the process of gene selection for antibody generation and formation. As I stated before, the heavy and light chain makes up each region and these chains are composed of choosing a piece or more from the following segments, variable, diversity, joining, and constant. If you remember, I previously stated that the constant region was the same. Well, that's because the constant region is only composed of the constant gene. I also previously mentioned that the variable region differs, and that's because the variable region is composed of the variable joining and diversity segments. Well, once you put all your desired genes together during transcription, translation occurs, and then you got yourself one antibody. Well, now, I bet you're wondering what happens to those genes between the two desired genes. They're cleaved out by an enzyme named recombinase. The main function of recombinase is to cleave and recombine the existing DNA sequence. Recombinase is composed of two subunits, RAG1 and RAG2. RAG1 and RAG2 enable recombinase to bind to the desired genes and performs the cleavage enabling the desired genes to be flanked together. The removal of the non-desired genes ensures that the lymphocyte can only produce the same antibody every time. Well now, I bet you're wondering, how does recombinase know where to bind to the genes? Well, there are recombination signal sequences. The RSS can be found on the ends of the genes, and they signal for where recombinase can bind to the genes, enabling the V, D, J, and C genes to be flanked together. The RSS are composed of two conserved sequences, a heptamer and nonamer, as well as a spacer between the two. The spacer varies between 12 and 23 base pairs, resulting in two different RSS, one with a 12 base pair spacer, which RAG1 binds to, and the other with a 23 base pair spacer, which RAG2 binds to. Now let's go look at everything we just talked about. And I want you to think of VDJ recombination as four steps. Here are all your possible VDJ and C genes. Step one, recombinase will come in binding to the respected RSS, cleaving and flanking the V and D genes together. Step 2. Recombinase will come in again cleaving and combining the J gene to the combined V and D gene. Step 3. Once again, recombinase will come in for the last time cleaving and combining the C gene to the combined V, D, J genes. Now these genes will go through translation and the antibody will be formed. V, D, J recombination can be really confusing, so I'm actually going to show you an overlay of the whole entire process with two images, one just containing the genes while the other has recombinase binding so you can understand that gene movement. Step one, recombinase is going to bind to the desired V and D genes, cleaving and pulling those genes together. Step two, recombinase is going to bind again, cleaving and bringing the desired J gene over to the combined V and D gene. Step three, recombinase binds again, cleaving and bringing the constant gene over to the combined VDJ genes. Step four, translation, and then you have your antibody.